This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, home to over 2,500 documentaries and nonfiction titles for curious minds. So why is a universe that looks something like this, or this, even been discussed ever? And uh, what are we actually looking at? Hang on, I'm just gonna play around with this some more, just cause it's cool. What you're seeing is actually a totally free desktop and mobile app. This is not sponsored by the creator, but thought it was just cool and could be useful for those of you who are math majors, physics majors, or just high. So I'll put a link below. Anyways, what you're seeing here is this wraparound effect. In the last video, we saw how the game of Asteroids had this 2D wraparound effect, where going off one side made you appear on the direct opposite. So there was no boundary to stop you. What we didn't discuss is what would you see if you were in this world? Well, we can assume light behaves just like these objects. When it goes off one side, it comes back on the other. So let's just track a light beam that's going into your eye and see where it's coming from. And we find, hey, it's the back of you. Meaning you would see the back of yourself if you were in this universe. Same if you look straight up. And even if you look diagonally, you'd still see yourself. But in this case, you'd appear to be further away because the light had to travel a further distance. We can think of this like there are copies of the universe attached on all sides of the main one. So now if we look to the right, we'd see ourselves, and same if we look above us. Even looking diagonally, we'd see ourselves. I just gotta start the light from the bottom to show this, but at this angle, just like before, we'd see our copy as being a little further away than our copies that are to the left or right of us, for example. And note, these copies would go on forever, because again, there's no boundary, nothing to stop us or light from moving in some direction forever. Realize this is still a single square universe with a finite area. If you start filling up the universe, then those objects appear in the copies as well. Okay, so this Asteroids game was a 2D universe with opposite sides connected. But if you were to stack those 2D universes together to form a cube, such that the opposite faces are now all connected, you'd get a 3 torus which we constructed at the end of the last video a little differently, but it's the same end result. Since all of these faces would be directly connected, then being inside this cube would look something like this. That is what you were seeing before. All you're seeing is a single cube universe with this wraparound effect, which makes it appear infinite. If you go through the front face, you just reappear at the back, and going through the top makes you just reappear at the bottom. Note this is still one cube, and I can close off our vision here to show that. This is all we have. When we go through one wall, we're actually just coming back through the opposite, which you can see. That right there is our copy. And when I open up the walls, we can see copies of ourselves everywhere, whether it be straight ahead, or diagonally, or above us, just like with the flat universe. Now, if instead of a cube, the universe was a hexagonal prism where opposite faces were connected, so again, no boundaries, then this would be what that universe would look like. Here we can see our copies. We have the hexagon face here. It's still one single finite prism, but there's the wraparound making it seem infinite. And I can even take away the walls completely, which looks uh, pretty trippy as well. All right, but what's so special about all these spaces? And yes, there are plenty more I'll be showing. Well, if you look up the shape of the universe on Google, you'll quickly find these three images. But these are not the end of the story. These are all potential geometries, as in we believe one of these geometrically describes the universe we live in. Why just these three? Because these shapes have the same curvature everywhere. The flat or Euclidean space has zero curvature everywhere then the sphere has the same positive curvature everywhere, and the hyperbolic space has the same negative curvature everywhere. These are the three possible geometries you see, because our universe seems to have constant curvature. 
That's why you don't see like a torus in here, because a torus has non-uniform curvature. And we don't think our universe varies like this. Curvature seems to be the same everywhere. So we're left with these possibilities. Now of these three, we believe the universe is flat. As in there's no higher dimensional curvature and parallel beams of light will stay parallel as opposed to converging or diverging, which they would in a spherical or hyperbolic universe respectively. But the thing is, there are different Euclidean universes that can exist, all with three spatial dimensions. Or put more mathematically, there are different Euclidean three manifolds that exist. To be exact, there are 18 of them. One is just Euclidean space, which is the first thought for most people. Infinite in all directions, with zero curvature. But an example of one universe that isn't infinite would be the three torus, because remember, it's just a single cube. In fact, 10 of these 18 universes are compact, and that's what you were seeing with this program. If you go to the spaces tab, we can see the three different geometries, and within each of those, some of the associated three manifolds with those curvatures. If we go to the flat category, not all 18 are here, but we still have several to explore. So let's see a few more, like the 1 6 turn space, which is the hexagonal prism space, however the two hexagon faces are glued with a 1 6 twist. So after going through one side, you appear on the opposite, but also rotated 60 degrees. That's why you see your copy over here and not directly in front of you. Then the following copies are all also rotated an additional 60 degrees for each face you look through. Or here's a universe with a half twist in it. It's mostly the same as the three torus. It's a cube with direct gluing of opposite faces, except the front is glued to the back with a half twist. So going through one of those faces makes you reappear on the opposite one after being rotated 180 degrees. Which is why instead of being directly in front of us, our first copy is down here. And you can't really tell, but it's upside down as well. That's why each Earth appears to be rotating in the opposite direction compared to the one before it. They haven't reversed their spin at all. Instead, our vision is just flipped 180 degrees for each face we look through. So each Earth appears upside down, then right side up, and so on. Then this universe that I'm not going to try to pronounce has an entirely different look. There's an article I'm going to link below that includes an explanation for most of these three manifolds, and in it you'll find the gluings for this universe. Instead of one cube like the three torus, it contains two cubes, where the green face is connected to the other green, blue to blue, and so on. And those connections lead to a universe that looks like this. Then the rest of the Euclidean manifolds are mostly similar to what we've seen. Like the Klein cubic looks like a three torus, but this universe is non-orientable. You can't tell by looking this way but if we tilt up, then we can. Notice now that the Earths are reversing their spin in each successive copy, but they aren't upside down. They've been inverted, or really our vision makes it appear that way. In this universe, the gluings are just like the three torus, but one pair of opposite faces is glued with a side-to-side -side flip in it. So after going through one of those, you'd come back into the universe on the opposite side inverted, like your heart would be on the wrong side of your body and all that stuff I've discussed in previous videos. This is also the answer to a question from the last video, what is a Klein bottle or K2 times a circle or S1? Because to find that you take that Klein bottle fundamental polygon, which was non-orientable, and create a stack of them just like before, where the top and bottom are connected, leaving us with a finite non-orientable 3D universe. But now let me acknowledge the question I'm sure many people have. Is this all just mathematical nonsense? Hmm, kind of. 
It's not that we think our universe is a giant hexagonal prism or cube with opposite ends connected where we can see copies of ourselves, but rather our universe seems to be flat everywhere and can be described by a three manifold. These, plus a few others, are the complete set of Euclidean three manifolds, so we say these are the possible shapes of our universe. Don't just disregard all of these as too crazy to be true though. In fact, the three torus universe has been theorized, and we have looked out into the universe in an attempt to find copies of ourselves, or really copies of solar systems and galaxies. The thing is, this is hard to do. Yes, the observable universe is very large, but if we were to see a copy of, let's say, our solar system, it would be a very old version of our solar system. The speed of light is only so fast, so if there were a copy, we'd be seeing its light from maybe billions of years ago. Unlike here, where the copies are exact and the cube isn't too large compared to what it would be for our universe if that were the case. Now, if the universe isn't flat, well, that opens us up to hyperbolic or spherical possibilities, which are even weirder. Definitely would need to be their own separate video, but worth showing real quick. Here's one example of a hyperbolic universe, where parallel beams of light would diverge from one another as they travel through space, and that would make things look, well, very weird. Or here's another one, for example. You can see they all have a different look compared to the Euclidean manifolds we saw. Then let's also see a spherical universe. Here parallel beams of light would eventually intersect, which again drastically affects how we'd see things. As you can see, this really affects how we perceive the size of objects at different distances from us. But again, this is all a topic for a separate video. Here we were focused on Euclidean three manifolds. I'm not going to go any further than this, but if space and cosmology really interest you, then you can learn a lot more over at CuriosityStream, the sponsor of this video. I want to highlight this series, Stephen Hawking's Favorite Places, again, since it goes so well with these last two videos. This series consists of three videos, all narrated by Stephen Hawking, where he goes on a journey through the universe as he discusses the Big Bang, quantum mechanics, parallel universes, and plenty more. This is definitely one of my favorites, not only because of the information, but these visuals that you're seeing. And if you also enjoy these kinds of documentaries, then CuriosityStream has an entire category dedicated to physics, space, and astronomy. CuriosityStream is available on a variety of platforms worldwide, and it only comes out to $2.99 per month. But if you sign up by using the link below, you'll get your first month's membership completely free, so no risk in giving it a try. And with this, you'll have unlimited access to top documentaries that I'm sure many of you will enjoy. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.